Good happy Wednesday morning, August 25th, 2021. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this Wednesday morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday morning, so let's get started. But first, we're going to begin with a check of the weather with meteorologist Kevin Scrippa. Kevin Scrippa is saying hazy, sunshine, hot, and humid for today with a full weather forecast. Let's go to meteorologist Kevin Scrippa right now. Make the most of our short but sweet New England summers by playing hard and relaxing better. Mainly Tubbs has your answer to better recovery. And Hazy sunshine, hot and humid as we go through the afternoon with temperatures up either side of 90. Heat indices running between 92 and 96 for a few hours this afternoon away from the shoreline in the southern half of the state and upper 80s in the North Country. This comes with no rain chances for us today and a small chance of a passing afternoon shower or storm tomorrow with the front eventually coming through to knock down this higher humidity that Henri left behind. Anywhere between 86 and 92 at three or four o'clock this afternoon. And again, this is with hazy sunshine through a good part of the day as any early fog this morning burns off. We drop back into the 60s with some fog tonight, only to do it one more day tomorrow. Temperatures may even be a couple of degrees warmer tomorrow as far as the actual readings are concerned, as well as uh, the heat indices, which will likely run above 95 for a few hours tomorrow afternoon. Small chance of a mid to late afternoon storm with a front coming through. Humidity will be gradually fading behind that as we work our way through the day on Friday. There'll be the chance of a passing shower later on Saturday, otherwise partial sunshine and dew points, which are running in the 60s to lower 70s, likely knock back into the 40s and 50s for both days over the weekend. A lot more comfortable by the time we get there, but again, hazy, hot, humid weather for the next couple of afternoons. If you're headed to the beaches today, we are looking at high tide coming up just after 2 o'clock this afternoon. Seas running 1 to 3 feet. Pollen counts remaining on the very high side. This is the weed pollen at this point in the season, and we'll look for that to continue here going forward until any sort of appreciable rain, which is really not in your extended forecast. The chance of a passing storm later tomorrow. There might be a shower in southern New Hampshire Friday afternoon, and there may be a couple of showers Saturday night or early Sunday. Okay, and there you go on that weather forecast from meteorologist Kevin Scrippa. Thank you for that weather forecast, Kevin. And now let's take a look at your traffic. And here is a check of those roadways for all of you this morning. In the Henniker area, you're seeing some smooth sailing. Hopkinton, smooth sailing. Bow, Pembroke, and Concord are all smooth sailing. And Bosquin and Canterbury, smooth sailing. Chichester, smooth sailing. Epsom, smooth sailing. With a little bit of slow and medium paced traffic right here. Northwood, smooth sailing. And Lee, smooth sailing with some medium paced traffic. Durham, smooth sailing. Rochester, smooth sailing with some little spots of medium paced traffic. Dover, smooth sailing with some spots of medium and slow paced traffic. Newington, smooth sailing. Portsmouth, smooth sailing with a little spot of medium paced traffic right here, as you can see. Greenland, smooth sailing. Rye, smooth sailing with some medium paced traffic. Northampton, smooth sailing. Hampton, smooth sailing. Seabrook, smooth sailing into the border of Massachusetts. On 101, all smooth sailing on 101. Great ride on 101. In the Hooks in Manchester area, there's smooth sailing with some spots of medium pace traffic. Goffstown, smooth sailing with some medium pace traffic. Bedford, smooth sailing with some medium-paced traffic. Amherst, smooth sailing. And Milford, smooth sailing with 
little spots of medium pace traffic. Merrimack smooth sailing, Nashua smooth sailing with some medium and slow pace traffic. Nashua Milford smooth sailing with some medium pace traffic. Derry, London Derry, Windham, Salem into the water, Massachusetts. You got smooth sailing with some spots of medium pace traffic. And that is a look at your morning traffic watch for this morning. And now let's get to your news. First step. Healthcare workers concerned as COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations continue to rise in New Hampshire. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Golden Corral in Manchester is open and now offers a weekend breakfast buffet. Come on in for a safe, comfortable, customer-friendly experience featuring a delicious, fresh, all-you-can-eat buffet of homemade favorites. Golden Corral at the shops at South Willow in Manchester, the only one for everyone. The state's COVID hospitalization numbers are quickly trending in the wrong direction. Tonight, the Department of Health and Human Services says 113 people are in New Hampshire hospitals. That's up from 28 on August 1st. Literally in the last just a little over three weeks, we've almost quadrupled the number of uh, patients hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire's hospitals. The New Hampshire Hospital Association says the highly contagious Delta variant is driving numbers higher and that the vast majority of those people are not vaccinated. We just have to do everything we can to prevent what we're seeing in other parts of the country where, you know, hospital systems are, are, are literally being overwhelmed. Um, and again, the, the best way for us to do that, to protect our loved ones, to protect our families, um, is to get that COVID-19 vaccine. Governor Chris Sununu expects the numbers to continue to climb over the next few weeks as the state works with facilities across the state. We're making sure they have everything from therapeutics, how we would potentially open surge centers. You know, if we had an a, a, a overfill of, of capacity, in beds? Uh, do we have oxygen? Do we have I, the, are the ICUs prepared with enough equipment? Hospital officials say they're working together to ensure every patient gets proper care. There's always questions and concerns about where we're going. We don't know, you know, what that surge is going to look like. Um, it certainly, you know, is increasing at a, at a, you know, a troubling rate. Hospital leaders are hopeful that the FDA's full approval of the Pfizer vaccine will encourage more people to roll up their sleeves. Reporting live in Manchester tonight, Mike Cronin, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Three more COVID-19 deaths announced in New Hampshire, two from earlier this summer. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Golden Corral in Manchester is open and now offers a weekend breakfast buffet. Come on in for a safe, comfortable, customer-friendly experience featuring a delicious, fresh, all-you-can-eat buffet of homemade favorites. Golden Corral at the shops at South Willow in Manchester, the only one for everyone. COVID-19 hospitalizations on the rise again tonight in New Hampshire. Currently, there are 113 people being treated in hospitals around the state, the most since late April. There are also 290 new cases to report, with active infections growing again. There are three new deaths, two from back in June that were just confirmed. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. More New Hampshire schools sign up for surveillance COVID-19 testing program. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Plymouth Ford is now new car Ford of Plymouth. That's right. Plymouth Ford is now new car Ford of Plymouth. That means the same. While many schools will have rapid tests available for students with COVID symptoms, an increasing number are signing on to test some of those without symptoms through the SAS or Safer at School screening program. To make sure that kids that are asymptomatic can opt in and it's an opt in for both families as well as schools to have a surveillance program at their school. Schools apply through DHHS that is working with the $40 million CDC grant 
contracting with four vendors that districts can choose from. The vendor will take care of things like consent and specimen collection. The school nurses have been working with Dr. Ben Chan on the details of the program, so they're very well aware of that. The vendors themselves with varied implementation options. They can go to a full-fledged, we're going to test every student every week, to we're going to test um, our sports teams, or we can get the system in place to do the testing and call them in when we think we have an outbreak going. The opportunity started this spring. Some districts view surveillance testing as too disruptive, others not ready to move forward. I think a lot of the superintendents and schools were waiting to see what the information was telling them. They're working with their school boards now. It is a local decision and there is no deadline for this, but officials want to underscore that no testing happens without parental consent. We're live in Portsmouth, Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Afghanistan withdraw prompts post-traumatic stress for some veterans. Let's take a listen to that video from WME War News 9. Golden Corral in Manchester is open and now offers a weekend breakfast buffet. Come on in for a safe, comfortable, customer-friendly experience featuring a delicious, fresh, all-you-can-eat buffet of homemade favorites. Golden Corral at the shops at South Willow in Manchester, the only one for everyone. While American troops work to complete the withdrawal in Afghanistan, veterans back home may be reliving their own experiences. It's a lot of emotions to be brought up uh, whenever something like this happens. Nicholas Tolentino is a combat veteran and nurse practitioner at Wentworth Douglas Hospital, who regularly works with vets. It's, it's triggering a lot of memories and it's, it's bringing up a lot of thoughts and feelings for people, positive, negative and somewhere in between, and a lot of frustration that then goes with it to say, was it all worth it? And the questions don't stop there. They're um, questioning the, uh, you know, the job that they did and why did we do it, why, did, all these things, which are all reasonable questions to ask, um, given, you know, having been involved in these types of situ situations. And people are really having a hard time because it's also bringing up a lot of emotions and thoughts and memories that they haven't had to process in quite some time. Nicholas says vets see the news updates, but also get pulled into political conversations they may not want to be a part of. Just because you're a veteran, you may have served, you may not have what people expect to have one opinion or another when it comes to the political views on it. And it's frustrating sometimes to that people make assumptions. Nicholas says he recently lost a friend to suicide and wonders if he was impacted by the Afghanistan withdrawal. He says he encourages veterans to reach out to someone, and if someone reaches out to you, give them a non-judgmental space. It's important to say that, you know what, you're having a normal response to an extraordinary event, and that's okay, and, and that's to be expected, and it's okay to struggle, but we're here to help and talk it through. Keep talking. In Manchester, Jess Moran, WMUR News 9. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The number up on your screen right now, it's 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. It's free, confidential, and available 24-7. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Afghan interpreter who helped U.S. troops from New Hampshire stuck in Kabul. Let's take a listen to that video from WME War News 9. Golden Corral in Manchester is open and now offers a weekend breakfast buffet. Come on in for a safe, comfortable, customer-friendly experience featuring a delicious, fresh, all-you-can-eat buffet of homemade favorites. Golden Corral at the shops at South Willow in Manchester, the only one for everyone. The Manchester family trapped in Afghanistan made it out and is home, but they are concerned for others left behind. Today, News 9 spoke with an Afghan interpreter who served alongside U.S. forces. He and his family hold special immigrant visas and live in the U.S., but they were visiting relatives when the Taliban swept to power. Now, they're facing violence every time they approach the airport in Kabul. They asked me where I was going. I told them I'm going to, I'm trying to get down to the airport. And they asked me more questions that I didn't want to answer their questions. 
uh, and they started beating me. Although I had my two-year daughter uh, with me, they, they, they just didn't care. He isn't sure how many more times he's willing to risk the safety of his family. The email that we have received from the U.S. Department of State, it tells us to keep trying at a later time, at a later time. So, but... Uh, uh, we are not going to try this anymore because we have been, we, we tried this for almost five consecutive days and no good results. We couldn't get to the, to the Marines or anybody. Uh, uh, the last time we were uh, at the gate, uh, my daughter, uh, because of the heat, heat trauma, I think she had heat trauma because we were under the sun with no shade, no cover over our head for almost the whole day we were there from 7 a.m till 11 p.m this interpreter whose identity we are protecting feels caught between the threat of violence and a u.s presence he observes that either cannot or will not help people like him outside the airport it is not safe it's not safe for anybody here in this country adam sexton wmur news Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.